But imagine having a training calendar that packed, which many of you do, where, but maybe not this packed. I mean, all day long, we've got training going on constantly. Now, depending on the organization, it is very important that your organization, whether you know, you could be a solo agent, you could be a real estate team, or you could be a brokerage. It is very essential to remain production centric in your thinking. Okay. There's two types of training out there in this universe for agents. And there's two different ways you can focus your time, either business servicing or income producing. Okay. I'll give you an example. People will come to me and say, I need coaching or training. Everybody wants to be coached and trained on business servicing. In other words, how to handle a client, customer service. And you get this training and this stuff is everywhere. It is absolutely everywhere. It flows across the board. And it's how to like, how do I fill out a listing agreement? How do I conduct a buyer consultation appointment? How do I hold an open house? How do I fill out these disclosures? How do I handle a client? That you can find everywhere. How do I use the MLS system? And notice no one has a problem with that. They go to that training. Yet 33% of agents are quitting in the first year and 87% don't make it five years. Yet they all devote all their time to business servicing. I'm yet to see any agent that had a hard time with their confidence and ability to service their clients to the point where they quit because of it. Everybody quits real estate for the same reason. They didn't get enough business to stay in it. So how much time do you devote towards income servicing, learning, training, coaching, and actual activities to generate business? That's the key. In most agents, it's a tiny percentage of their day and their week. Yet that's the biggest need they have. And that is what leads them to all their goals and all their family and future happiness. Then you look at how, what percentage of your time do you spend on income producing activities? next to none. So by your business being, or your organization being production centric has everything to do with devoting your time and training to income producing activities, to increase production. I mean, that's why I exist. That's why my, my company exists. It's because that training is just few and far between out there. And I look at the biggest need for our industry amongst agents and, and the real estate is the biggest need clearly. 33% first year, 87% don't make it five years. Those success, those failure rates are out of control. To me, that's the most glaring problem in our industry is agents just don't succeed. And the systems, tools, training, not out there to do it. So if you want to have a successful organization, I would make sure those systems and tools are there so those activities do occur. And you do that by making the organization production centric. We focus on training, activities, coaching around business generation, business conversion, how to generate leads, how to convert leads. I am not worried about a willingness to learn how to service clients. Like I said, everybody always shows up for that. You'll have that now. But how much do you infuse this type of training through our agent onboarding calendar, through our first quarter's checklist, their first quarter in the business, and through our office training calendar. Okay, so I'm gonna show you that as well too. Can you imagine an organization, and I have led organizations and owned organizations that do this, but imagine having a training calendar that packed, which many of you do, where, but maybe not this packed, I mean, all day long, we've got training going on constantly. And yes, there is some business servicing training in here, but we've got lots of income producing training, even like hands-on, like we got masterminds where we got calibrations, right? We got money Monday nights where people are coming in to do call-a-thons where they're prospecting every evening, where they're actually lead generating together, where agents are getting together and sharing different ideas in a mastermind. Look, they're lead generating during the day together for two hours or an hour and a half, whatever that's at. I can't see the writing so small, it's so packed and I'm so old. 
right? Maybe they're having competitions where they're battling on listing presentations, back and forth, role playing their listings. Everybody learns from each other and gets practice on theirs. Masterminding again together on Fridays. Courses on how to get leads with social media. How does an organization train this? Man, they, they, they you know, what they do is they use different people to train in their different specialties, right? You got agents and leaders and throughout the organization. And they're, if, you know, if you provide them with training from other leaders, agents will step up to train themselves. You just got to create a production centric culture because there's a lot of offices that talk about their culture out there. But I, I really think that that culture is more like the first letters of the word cult. And that's more of a negative sense because if it's just about relationships, it becomes about guilt. Like I'm here because I like them or they're just my friends. That's cool. But I mean, you know, someone starts not selling enough at real estate over time. They're just staying out of guilt and, and they could never leave because they would break up with these relationships and people generally don't want to be confrontational. So they're just staying there out of obligation and that is not healthy. That's when culture becomes cult. But if you can at least infuse to some degree a production centric environment into your organization, again, whether that's a brokerage or a team or yourself for that matter, where production centric nature becomes a part of your DNA, you're always going to have a positive attitude to, towards the toughest stuff to do because man, lead generation and income producing activities, that's not fun for anybody. That's hard stuff. It's not easy. So you've actually got to purposely adjust your mindset to get this committed so that you have production centric activities going on all the time. Otherwise you turn into an organization or a human or a team or whatever. That's kind of like, oh, I'm not going to do that. I don't like bothering that. Or I'm not going to do that. I don't like people do that to me. Or I'm not going to do that. It's no fun. Or that's not who I am. Or I don't have time for that. I got to put my clients first. You start to get negative around it. You start to actually think negatively, right? You start to say negative things to other people. And that makes you committed to a certain particular stance about those activities. So then you have to act that way and you develop bad habits that way. And it starts more negative thinking that way. And it's that downward Gandhi circle spiral of thought where you actually become opposed to generating business. And to me, 80 to 90% of all agents feel that way. And that's why 87% don't make it five years because they do not infuse their own business with production centric as a part of the culture a part of the organization's DNA. And it starts with a calendar like that. It need that habit needs to be started. There needs to be an expectation that that's what you do right from the start. I mean, imagine, okay. So imagine if a calendar like that gets out, imagine a calendar like this on the recruiting trail, you know, you're meeting with other agents. And you show this and they're struggling because sales volumes down and they're like, wow, look what's going on in your office. All these different ways to solve your problems. Maybe that's why I'm not failing. Maybe it's because I need to be in, on your team or your brokerage or your office, your company, your brand. Wouldn't it be neat if I, you know, wow, if I were in a production centric environment, who knows where I'd go? This actually is great for not just agent retention. This is amazing for recruiting. Heck, so is an agent onboarding calendar. So is a first quarter checklist. Heck, you can invite potential recruits to attend some of these things, to do some of these things. Just take a test spin with your organization. Just to see what it's like in that type of environment, because guys, an environment that's production centric is exciting. I remember taking a flipping gong I mean, a gong, you know, you hit with a big mallet. There used to be a show called The Gong Show. And, you know, you and they'd hit a gong on that show. I'll leave it at that. I actually had one of those in one of my offices that I'd started. And everybody would get together. I called it a call blitz. Everybody would get in there. You know, at, at its peak, we'd get 20, 30 agents in there. You know, some days it was five or 10, you know, how it goes. 
And anytime anybody and everybody's in there, you know, doing something to generate business, it could be texting, could be calling, could be prospecting business they don't know, could be calling recruits, could be, you know, reaching out to do annual reviews or an annual property analysis with with their past clients. It could be calling to invite people to their client event. Everybody's doing different stuff, but they're doing some sort of lead generation. But if they got an appointment of any kind, buyer consultation, listing appointment, anything like that set, you earn the right to go hit the gong. And if you hit the gong, obviously in a room with doors closed, it would really disrupt everybody else's phone calls. And that was so cool because it was just funny because then you had to like think up excuses. Oh, it's just, we're so busy over here. Wow, I just some moron, you know, you had to like, so it was just kind of fun. Whoever set an appointment got to do that and it would, it would shake everybody up but it was agreed that's what you were gonna to get to do and that was your reward. And yes, it's hard to call in a room that's busy with other people talking, but guess what? That's every call center in America knows that's how you get your highest efficiency because that energy keeps you going and it actually works well with the person on the other end of the phone too. Um, and that's why we have call centers where people are packed in like a tight honeycomb, but it's very natural for us as human beings to say, we don't like that. We need to be by ourselves because we don't wanna lead generate. And if we go by ourselves, we won't lead generate. But if you pack yourself in a room, you'll be a much better lead generator. It's just uncomfortable because you're not used to doing it. That is tested. That is proven. That is neurological science, guys. But yes, of course, it's painful. Just like we don't like to do sit-ups either. But we like the result. This is the way it works. But those overcoming those common objections are hard if an organization is not production-centric. But if they're production-centric, that's all agents know when they, they come in and they see that and they realize they're expected to go to that and attend to that and yes they may have those objections but other people in the office will actually correct that for the leader because they've already heard it they've already battled up against it that's the key now i will say a lot of these calendars and training systems are tough because a lot of agents are part-time or they have other full-time jobs and i'm just i'm here to tell you the success rate of people working another job is much lower then if you quit and throw all your eggs in this basket, I'm just here to say that that is, uh, that's just the way it goes. If you've got a very big brokerage, there will be agents that succeed and it happens. I've got many examples of agents that have gone from full-time to part-time to full-time agent and became very successful there. I have many examples of that, but I would say they have a much harder success rate than an agent that comes in full-time. So I would say they're um, half as likely to succeed, okay? So if 33% don't make it in their first year in the business as a full-time agent, I would say 66% won't make it in their first year if they are part-time. So there'll be a lot of small brokerages, small teams that don't take on part-time for that reason because with that becomes drama. They can never show up for things. They're never available to show clients. They're never available to hold open houses or they're never available to lead generate. I mean, you can see what it's like after, you know, imagine coming home from a full-time job. They always think, oh, no problem. I'll be able to work on my database then. No, they won't. They'll be exhausted. Full-time job, there's no way you're going to put your database together. I mean, it's really, really hard. So trying to schedule and trying to do things at night is hard anyway. I don't care who you are. You know, you have most energy in the morning. So, you know, when they working is very important too. So it's very tough. I just, I'm going to be straight with you on that one. The success rate is much lower. So a lot of smaller brokerages will not allow that. And if they do allow it, just understand you're going to probably have to create a custom agent onboarding calendar for them because they're not going to be able to attend a lot of the things that are regularly scheduled in your office. So you're going to have to have custom calendars and depending on how part-time they are, if they work nine to five, oh goodness, it's going to be really hard. You just, they're just going to, have to be real slow. Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of people that want to see property during the day. Like, I mean, most people don't want to see property at night. Sorry, I would never want to see property at night. I'm tired. That's when my time with my kids, I'm exhausted. I'll take off work or I don't work at those times or I have flexibility in my job. Really hard to succeed if you have another full-time job. Is here to tell you and if you got another full-time job i would do everything i can to cut that cord figure out exactly how much time it's going to take you to earn a certain amount of money and then cut the cord 
You need to have this much money in the bank saved up to get you through three months of expenses. So find out what that number is. And you need to have this many clients under contract. But life gets in the way. I mean, you only have so many Saturdays and Sundays, so you're gonna have baby showers, birthday parties, you're gonna have other commitments. And at nights, you're gonna have other commitments. So it's just really hard, and you're gonna be tired. So it's just really, really hard. So I always encourage people to quit the other job because it's gonna to be too hard to do all the stuff you need to do to bridge that gap and get some income in your first six months to a year. Otherwise, it's gonna take forever. If you're a leader of an organization that's bringing that person on, understand there's a good chance that they're going to quit and leave you. And, you know, because what they're going to do is they're going to close a transaction and say, hey, I mean, I'm never, you know, I, you know, I, I need more business. I need more leads, but it's hard to give them leads because they're never available to show them or service them. They're going to say, I need to go to a discount brokerage that doesn't charge me anything because I need to keep every bit of my commission check because they can't receive the value that a production centric company or organization does. They can't, they just don't have time to do all that learning. They just want the leads and they want the money. And that's gonna be very frustrating for you if you have a production centric organization to provide them with value. Because they don't have time for the accountability. They don't have time to get better. They don't have time to learn. They don't have time, you know, for anything. And that's gonna get frustrating and that usually causes drama and it causes very, very unhealthy exits from teams. So they end up just leaving. They're gonna stay on your organization. I would suggest they set up a referral network where they actually get paid referral fees just to refer them to somebody who is full-time. So they get something if they have a full-time job so that someone can you know, actually properly serve these clients, especially in low inventory market when there aren't a lot of listings. My goodness, I mean, how, how are we gonna wait for you to be available to show me a home if you're busy one night you're busy all day at your job, we might miss out the house sells to somebody else because you're just not available enough. So that's gonna happen a ton. So I'd rather see them refer in, then they can take their time as long as they want to try to do all this learning on their own through a to-do list or through a customized calendar. And that's how I'd, how, that's how I'd handle those that, that are not producing.